friends, this is Chavi Bhalotia, Assistant Professor, Biani Group of Colleges. Today I am going to teach you about Parthenogenesis. So friends, basically what is Parthenogenesis? What do you mean by Parthenogenesis? Parthenogenesis is basically virgin synthesis. It occurs in various animals as well as plants. In plants it is more common but in animals it also occurs. This is not a natural phenomena in many animals, but we try to achieve parthenogenesis because it is a sort of formation of animals in which there are no gametes involved. So this is an energy saving procedure. So some animals undergo parthenogenesis when they are trying to save energy or they are undergoing some harsh conditions. But usually parthenogenesis does not occur naturally in an animal. Some animals undergo natural parthenogenesis which is called as complete parthenogenesis. This is called as complete parthenogenesis because these animals have no form of other reproduction such as asexual or sexual reproduction. Parthenogenesis however is considered a form of asexual reproduction but sometimes it is considered as a form of reproduction and not as asexual reproduction because this form of reproduction does not require the involvement of gametes although so it can be classified as asexual but sometimes it is differentiated because organism formed contains the number of chromosomes as the parent however in asexual form of reproduction the number of chromosomes are reduced but here we have to consider parthenogenesis as a form of reproduction and this form of reproduction when occurs naturally in some organisms it is called as complete parthenogenesis. Complete parthenogenesis occurs in animals such as bees but not in all bees only in some of the bees such as the male bees. The male bees are formed from the unfertilized eggs. They develop a complete organism from an unfertilized egg. The number of chromosomes in the egg is haploid. Thus, the formation of a male from an unfertilized egg is considered as complete parthenogenesis because that is the natural form of parthenogenesis. No one has induced that parthenogenesis or no one has forced that parthenogenesis on the organism. But since the number of chromosomes have reduced, so that will be considered in haploid or incomplete parthenogenesis. But only the organisms that contain the number of chromosomes that are haploid or they are naturally occurring diploid, they will be considered in the case of complete parthenogenesis. So organisms such as unicellular organisms though, though that undergo unicellular organisms undergo uh, binary fission and other forms of reproduction. So that would be considered as an, uh, complete parthenogenesis because they don't under, they don't produce any gametes naturally. So they don't need to fertilize or they don't need to come together to form a new organism. Thus that is the natural state and they are producing an organism naturally and that would be considered as complete parthenogenesis. So what are these organisms which undergo complete parthenogenesis or we can say that is their natural state of parthenogenesis. These organisms are usually unicellular or small organisms. These organisms are basically poriferans or coelentrates. There are no higher organisms which undergo complete parthenogenesis. Higher organisms undergo incomplete parthenogenesis which is divided into two types that is haploid and diploid. Now haploid we have previously discussed. Haploid parthenogenesis is the parthenogenesis in which organism has developed from a egg which has haploid number of chromosomes that is half the number of chromosomes as the parent which occurs in basically bees and other organisms which have a social structural organization. Social structural organization is an organization in which an animal is assigned on the basis of what function it is going to have when it grows up such as bees have a social structural organization. In bees we have a queen bee female bees and male bees. Male bees are haploid and thus they undergo functions such as collecting the food, they take care of the eggs, they build nests. These are the functions which male bees are doing. So they are called worker bees. Female bees are laying eggs, 
female bees are collecting nectar so the, they are called as reproductive bees and the queen bee queen bee has only one function that is to lay eggs and eat royal jelly so when a female feeds on royal jelly it becomes queen bee so this is a social structural organization in an animal group there are many group of bees and there are many group of queens so this is what we are doing and there we find haploid parthenogenesis or incomplete parthenogenesis because it is not complete the organism formed we have it is not completely formed the organism we have is incomplete it has half the number of chromosomes but the development is complete and we can have that organism without any formation of gametes that is called that is why we consider it as haploid parthenogenesis now when we call diploid parthenogenesis in diploid parthenogenesis almost all the steps of sexual reproduction have occurred already but the development of organism takes place now how can we consider it as parthenogenesis when all the sexual reproduction participants or all the sexual reproduction steps have already taken place because in sec even after sexual reproduction there are several stages which have to occur for an organism to develop but in parthenogenesis several stages have been skipped such as diploid parthenogenesis in diploid parthenogenesis we have two types amniotic and meiotic in amniotic parthenogenesis the meiotic division does not occurs the organism is 2n the organism remains 2n there is no fusion of gametes an egg we all know that egg is a diploid structure which is reduced by reductional division of meiosis and then we have a n egg or a haploid egg which then develops into an organism when it fuses with a sperm but what if we have a egg that is already 2n so in this condition we have an egg which is already 2n and why the egg is 2n because there is no meiotic division or no reductional division such type of parthenogenesis occurs in daphnia or isopods now we come to meiotic parthenogenesis now we have meiotic division is there but still the egg remains 2n how this is what we are going to study there are two phenomena due to which the egg remains 2n even after the meiotic division has occurred so what happens in the in that phenomena such such as when the egg remains only 2n even after the meiotic division has occurred we are going to see two phenomena one is restitution and the other is auto fertilization so first phenomena is restitution in restitution the primary uh, primary oocyte undergoes karyokinesis but is not followed by cytokinesis the meiosis division has occurred the chromosomes have separated there is reduction division they have divided but the cytokinesis does not occurs that means the division as not complete the chromosome number have divided the nucleus of a cell has divided but the cell aren't separate the nucleus is divided into the cell and the cell remains only one the cell does not converts into two cell after the division so here we have a cell which has separated its chromosomes but hasn't divided itself into two cells so this is what we call as restitution here karyokinesis occurs but it is not followed by cytokinesis meaning that two cells are not formed even after the chromosome number is separated so we have a cell which is 2n so it will produce 2n only after my uh, after mitosis mitosis is just equational division mitosis will produce cells which have equal number of chromosomes as the parents meiosis is reductional division here we have meiosis but cell hasn't divided so the chromosome number remains equal and now when meios uh, mitosis occurs it will create equational that is 2n will remain 2n mitosis has completed its job but the cell refused to divide this is called as restitution the phenomena of restitution is observed in insect uh, lepidoptera class of insects now we come at auto fertilization auto fertilization is a false sort of fertilization the word itself is explanatory what will be auto fertilization auto fertilization is self explanatory like it is explaining us that there is some sort of pseudo fertilization or false fertilization what happens is during oogenesis there are various stages in which various ovums and oocytes are formed in a stage where secondary oocyte is formed there is a production of polar body and then the secondary oocyte converts into another polar body and ovum 
Now at this stage when ovum is formed and there are two polar bodies in this system, then we have an auto fertilization where the polar body fuses with the ovum giving it a false pretense that fertilization has occurred. And since we have we know that polar body is also a haploid body. So when the ovum is formed n and when it fuses with another polar body of n then it becomes 2n. So friends this was what parthenogenesis usually in animals look like. There are other forms also, there are other detailed examples, there are always exceptions. But this is what we have con come to an conclusion that these are the types and these are the animals which usually occur parthenogenesis. So we will have a quick revision. Incomplete, there is two types of parthenogenesis, complete and incomplete. Complete parthenogenesis occurs in organisms which have complete division like 2n remains 2n. Organism develops itself. There are no ovums, there are no sperms. Organism develops itself into a new organism. This is found usually in basic organisms such as cnidarians and coelenterates, poriferans also. Now when we come to higher organisms, there is incomplete parthenogenesis. We have divided incomplete on the basis of number of chromosomes. There is haploid parthenogenesis and diploid parthenogenesis. Haploid parthenogenesis occurs in organisms which have a social structural organization such as bees and ants, whereas diploid parthenogenesis occurs in insects. Here we have two types diploid parthenogenesis, amniotic and meiotic. Amniotic is the meiosis is absent. So when the meiosis is absent, the ovum remains 2n and develops into an organism. Second is meiotic. Here the meiosis occurs but still the ovum remains 2n. So the meiosis is of two types, restitution and auto fertilization. In restitution, there is division of chromosomes but not the division of cell. That is karyokinesis is not followed by cytokinesis. The next is auto fertilization. Here everything is going according to the plan. But in the end, a polar body fuses with the ovum thus forming 2N ovum. This ovum now produces an entire organism. So thank you friends for watching our video. Please like, share, comment and subscribe Guru KPO channel. Thank you and have a nice day.